and as a young a young boy and I mean a boy of uh, 12 or 13 certainly uh, that I encountered outside the home again uh, in uh, the local grocery store or the local uh, drug store the softcore pornography what people call softcore and it happens it, it happened in stages gradually it doesn't necessarily not to me at least happen overnight once you become addicted to it and I look at this as a kind of addiction uh, like other kinds of addiction of addiction you keep I would keep looking for more potent more explicit more it's graphic aggressive. kinds of material like an addiction you keep craving something which is harder harder something which which gives you a greater uh, sense of, of, of excitement Again, I'm talking from personal experience, uh, hard, real personal experience. The most damaging kinds of pornography are those that involve violence and, and sexual violence. Some people would, would say that, well, I, I've seen that stuff and it doesn't do anything to me. I wasn't a pervert in the sense that, you know, people look at somebody and say, I know there's something wrong with him and just tell. I mean, I, I was essentially a normal person. I had good friends. I, I, uh, I led a normal life, except for this one small but very potent and very destructive segment of it that I kept very secret and very close to myself and didn't let, let anybody know about it. I'm no social scientist and I haven't done a survey. I mean, I, I don't pretend that I know what John Q. Citizen thinks about this. <clears throat> but I've lived in prison for a long time now. And I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography without question, without exception, deeply influenced and consumed by an addiction to pornography. There's no question about it. The FBI's own study on serial homicide shows that the most common interest among serial killers is pornography. And pornography can reach out and snatch a kid out of any house today. He, he snatched me out of my home. It snatched me out of my home 20, 30 years ago. And, and as diligent as my parents were, uh, and they were diligent in protecting their children, and as good a Christian home as we had, and we had a wonderful Christian home, uh, there is no protection against the kinds that the kinds of influences that are loose in the society that, that, that tolerates mm -hmm. there are kids sitting out there switching the tv dial around and come upon these movies late at night or i don't know when they're on but they're on and any kid can watch them it's scary when i think what would have happened to me if i had seen i was scary enough mm -hmm. i mean that i just ran into stuff outside the home but to be, to, to know that children are watching that kind of thing today or can pick up their phone and dial away for it or send away for it and let's come into the present now because what i'm talking about happened 30 20 30 years ago that is in my formative stages and what scares and appalls me dr dobson is when i see what's on cable tv <laughs> some of the movies i mean some of the violence in the movies uh, that come into homes today with stuff that they that they wouldn't show in X-rated adult theaters 30 years ago. Testifying to Christ, shining my light every day. I would read and pray. 